Level 0. Every inferno starts somewhere, but at level 0 it's barely worth a raised eyebrow. Maybe it's a campfire someone forgot to put out. Maybe it's a cigarette flicked from a car window. Or maybe it's that one neighbor who thinks they're a grill master but really just invented the world's first charcoal explosion. At this stage, it looks harmless. A few flickers, some smoke, something you could stomp out with your shoe, or at least try before realizing, wow, this is hotter than I thought. Firefighters call this the incipient stage. The science is simple. Fire needs fuel, oxygen, and heat. If it doesn't get fed, it fizzles out. But here's the catch. Nature loves to feed flames. Dry grass, fallen leaves, or a sudden gust of wind can turn that innocent spark into a fast-moving threat. Most of the time, level zero flames die unnoticed. Other times, they become the headlines that change history. So while level zero feels calm, even laughable, it's also the most dangerous moment because no one's paying attention. And once it slips past the stage, that's when fire starts climbing the levels. Level one. At level one, things get noticeable. We're no longer talking about a single spark on the ground. We're talking about a wildfire, but still small enough that firefighters can circle it, size it up, and think, yeah, we've got this one. This is where flames start stretching their legs. They eat through dry brush, jump to a few trees, and send smoke curling into the sky. If you're nearby, it's no longer a maybe I should grab a bucket situation. It's a, why does it smell like my backyard is on fire? Scientifically, this is called the incipient to growth stage when the fire finds its first real fuel source. Heat rises, air rushes in, and suddenly the flames behave less like a campfire and more like a living, breathing thing. Real example? California sees hundreds of these each year. Many are quickly contained within a few acres. In 2025 alone, dozens of level 1 fires started from lightning strikes or power line sparks, each one a coin toss between harmless and history-making. Here's the scary part. Most megafires begin as level 1. They're the overlooked problem child, the fire everyone assumes will behave, until a gust of wind, a patch of dry forest, or one unlucky day changes everything. Because once a small wildfire gets out of hand, it doesn't stay level 1 for long. Level 2. At level 2, the wildfire isn't just a headline in the local paper, it's national news. What started as a blaze in the hills is now tearing through neighborhoods, crossing highways, and forcing mass evacuations. This is when an entire country pays attention. Let's rewind to 2023 in Maui, Hawaii. What began as brush fires, fueled by hurricane winds and bone-dry conditions, turned into one of the deadliest wildfires in U.S. history. Flames moved so fast, entire streets in Lahaina were wiped out within hours. Over 100 lives were lost, 2,200 buildings destroyed, and damages soared past 5.5 billion. Level 2 doesn't just take trees, it takes towns. Scientifically, the fire has entered the fully developed stage. It creates its own weather system. Winds that carry embers miles away, dropping fire into places people thought were safe. Evacuation sirens blare, highways jam with cars. The orange glow isn't just on the horizon anymore, it's in your backyard. And here's where reality hits hard. Firefighting resources stretch thin. Water drops from helicopters look impressive on TV, but against a level 2 blaze, they're like spitting on a bonfire. Entire fire departments work around the clock, knowing containment might take weeks, if it comes at all. Level 2 is the turning point. It's when a wildfire transforms from an environmental hazard into a humanitarian disaster. Homes, lives, and history vanish in smoke. And while the fire may burn within one nation's borders, the smoke doesn't stop at the border. Level 3. At Level 3, the fire stops caring about maps. What began as one nation's emergency turns into a multi-regional disaster. Flames spill over borders, smoke blankets neighboring countries, and suddenly two or three governments are fighting the same monster. One of the most infamous examples, the 1987 Black Dragon Fire. It started in China's Heilongjiang province, but dry winds pushed it across the border into the Soviet Union. In just a few weeks, more than 7 million hectares of forest were gone, an area bigger than Ireland. Over 200 people lost their lives, tens of thousands were left homeless, and the political tension between China and the USSR turned what was already a nightmare into a geopolitical crisis. Scientifically, Level 3 fires are fueled by sheer scale. Once a blaze reaches millions of acres, it generates its own weather. Lightning storms, tornado-like winds, and fire clouds that hurl embers dozens of miles away. Imagine standing on your porch and seeing flames falling from the sky like rain. That was reality for thousands. And here's the frightening truth. In level 3, there is no outside help. When a fire swallows multiple regions at once, everyone's resources are already maxed out. Neighboring nations can't send firefighters because they're too busy saving their own homes. Level 3 wildfires prove a terrifying point. 
Nature doesn't respect human borders. And once the flames have consumed entire regions, there's only one way for them to grow bigger, by leveling up into a megafire. Level 4. Welcome to Level 4, the world of megafires. These aren't just wildfires that grew too big. These are monsters that rewrite the definition of destruction. By definition, a megafire burns over 100,000 acres, but in reality, they're remembered less for numbers and more for the devastation they leave behind. Take California in recent years. The 2025 Gifford Fire roared past 118,000 acres, forcing thousands to flee as walls of flame advanced faster than fire crews could draw lines. Firefighters describe megafires like living, breathing organisms. They don't just burn trees, they outthink containment, shifting directions with sudden winds and leaping across entire highways in seconds. Scientifically, megafires are terrifying because they create their own microclimates. The flames generate so much heat that they form towering pyrocumulus clouds, essentially fire-made thunderstorms. Those clouds can hurl lightning bolts miles away, sparking entirely new blazes. Imagine trying to fight one fire only to have it give birth to five more. And the cost? Beyond property loss, megafires pump massive amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, feeding the very climate conditions that make them more likely. It's a vicious cycle. Hotter summers create bigger fires, and bigger fires create hotter summers. Level 4 is the point of no return for many communities. You don't fight a megafire, you survive it. Families lose not just houses, but entire neighborhoods, entire histories, reduced to ash and hours. And as destructive as megafires are, they're only the halfway point on this scale. Because when a megafire grows even bigger, it earns a new, terrifying name. The Gigafire. Level 5. And if megafires are terrifying, then gigafires are the stuff of nightmares. Defined as fires that burn over 1 million acres of land, these aren't just blazes. They're continent-sized infernos that leave scars visible from space. The clearest example? California's August Complex Fire of 2020. Sparked by lightning strikes, it merged into a single, unstoppable wall of flame. By the time it was contained, it had burned 1.03 million acres, the largest fire in California's history. Imagine a blaze stretching across multiple counties with entire towns swallowed before evacuation orders even reached them. Giga fires behave differently than anything firefighters are trained for. The heat columns can grow so intense they create fire tornadoes, whirling cyclones of flame and debris that shred everything in their path. The smoke plumes rise high into the stratosphere, drifting across countries, blotting out the sun, and choking millions who live far from the flames. And here's the real danger. Gigafires overwhelm not just landscapes, but nations. They drain emergency funds, stretch firefighting crews to exhaustion, and devastate local economies. Recovery isn't measured in months. It takes decades for forests, wildlife, and communities to even partially return. These fires also accelerate climate change. A single gigafire can release more carbon into the atmosphere than some countries emit in an entire year. In other words, each gigafire makes the next one more likely. At level 5, the fire isn't just destroying homes. It's rewriting ecological and economic history. And as terrifying as that sounds, we're still climbing. Because once wildfires stop being seasonal events and start becoming year-round realities, level 6, at level 6, fire stops being an event and becomes a season. It's no longer a once-in-a-decade catastrophe, it's an annual expectation. People talk about fire season the same way others talk about summer vacation or football season. But here, the stakes are survival. Take California in 2018. That year, more than 8,500 wildfires ripped across the state, burning nearly 2 million acres. The campfire alone erased the entire town of Paradise, killing 85 people and leaving tens of thousands homeless. Insurance companies collapsed under the payouts. Communities never fully recovered. Scientifically, this happens because hotter temperatures and prolonged droughts strip the land of moisture, creating a perfect fuel bed. Add high winds, and suddenly one spark becomes a rolling wall of fire. And when it happens every year, resources are drained before recovery can even begin. At level 6, firefighting isn't about putting out the fire. It's about managing survival. Helicopters buzz overhead daily. Families keep evacuation bags by the door. Smoke becomes part of the summer sky, with air quality so bad children can't go outside for weeks. The psychological toll is just as devastating. Imagine rebuilding your home only to lose it again next summer. Imagine living in a place where the question isn't if the fire will come back, but when. Level 6 marks the moment wildfires stop being disasters and become part of life itself. And as horrifying as that sounds, there's another step. Because when entire continents ignite at once, we hit level 7, level 7. At level 7, fire no longer belongs to a country. It belongs to a continent. 
The scale is so vast that entire regions, thousands of miles apart, burn at the same time. For millions of people, the horizon glows orange, and the air is thick with ash. Take Europe in 2025. That year became the continent's worst wildfire season on record. Over 1 million hectares burned, four times the average. Villages in Greece, Spain, and Italy were erased. Smoke drifted across borders, choking cities that, um, weren't even near the flames. Entire landscapes, from Portugal to the Balkans, smoldered under relentless heat waves. And this wasn't just Europe. In Australia's black summer of 2019 to 2020, fires consumed 18 million hectares, killed or displaced 3 billion animals, and blanketed New Zealand in smoke from thousands of kilometers away. Firefighters described it as fighting a dragon with a garden hose. Scientifically, this happens because climate extremes synchronize. Heat waves and drought spread across multiple countries at once, creating tinderbox conditions everywhere. Once the first sparks hit, firestorms multiply faster than governments can respond. At level 7, the crisis isn't just flames, it's infrastructure collapse. Power grids fry, crops vanish, refugees flood across borders not from war, but from fire. International aid becomes meaningless when everyone's burning at the same time. This is the level where we realize fire isn't just a national threat, it's a planetary one in the making. And as terrifying as a burning continent sounds, level 8 takes it global. Level 8. At level 8, fire stops being regional or continental. It becomes global. Imagine looking at a satellite map of Earth and seeing smoke plumes rising not from one corner, but from every hemisphere at once. That's a level 8 wildfire season, the entire planet choking in its own flames. In 2023, Canada experienced its largest wildfire season ever. More than 18 million hectares burned, sending smoke as far as New York, Chicago, and even Europe. At the very same time, Greece, Spain, and Hawaii were burning too. Airplanes in New York were grounded not by local fires, but by smoke drifting thousands of miles away. For weeks, the planet felt smaller because everyone was breathing the same ash. This is the terrifying part about Level 8, synchronization. Different continents, different climates, but the same story. Record-breaking heat, bone-dry forests, and unstoppable flames. Scientists say this is exactly what climate change does. It stacks the deck so that multiple regions ignite at once, and the effects don't stay local. Smoke from Canadian fires circled the globe, cooling some regions temporarily while poisoning the lungs of millions. Crops failed under skies without sun. Entire economies slowed, not because their country was burning, but because someone else's was. At level 8, wildfires don't just destroy homes. They rearrange the atmosphere. They dictate air quality for nations that never saw a single flame. But as terrifying as a global fire season sounds, it's still not the peak. Because the next level isn't about geography. It's about feedback. Fires so powerful, they create the conditions for even bigger ones. Level 9. At level 9, wildfires stop being something we put out and start being something that fuels the very world they're burning. These aren't just blazes, they're feedback loops. Fires so powerful, they alter the climate, which then creates the perfect conditions for even bigger fires. Here's how it works. When a massive wildfire rips through millions of acres, it releases staggering amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. That extra CO2 traps more heat, raising global temperatures. Hotter air dries out forests, drier forests become easier fuel. And what does that fuel create? More megafires. It's a vicious cycle. Fire breeds fire. Take the 2019-2020 Australian Black Summer. Those fires released about 900 million tons of carbon, nearly double the country's annual emissions. The smoke rose so high it created pyrocumulonimbus clouds, fire-generated thunderstorms that circled the globe. Those storms sparked new fires, literally making the blaze reproduce itself. At level 9, wildfires don't just scorch landscapes. They reprogram the planet. Ice sheets melt faster under soot-darkened skies. Permafrost thaws, releasing methane, another greenhouse gas that supercharges warming. The fire's fingerprints show up in weather patterns months later. The danger here isn't a single inferno, it's momentum. Humanity can battle one fire, maybe even ten. But when the climate itself is tilted toward constant ignition, we're no longer fighting fires. We're fighting the future they've created. And if feedback loops keep accelerating, there's one final level left. The nightmare scenario. Level 10, an extinction level blaze. Level 10. At level 10, we're not talking about a season or even a continent. We're talking about a planet consumed, an extinction-level blaze, a fire so vast and so unrelenting that it ends civilization as we know it. Imagine this. Decades of rising temperatures have left the Earth bone dry. Forests across every continent ignite almost simultaneously. Megafires merge into gigafires, and gigafires merge into something even larger. 
An unbroken inferno stretching across oceans of land. The skies turn black. Sunlight is blocked for weeks by massive smoke plumes that circle the globe. Crops fail in the dark. Air becomes unbreathable without filtration. And the heat? It doesn't just stay on the ground. It shifts global weather systems, warping winds and creating firestorms that generate hurricane-level gusts of flame. Scientists already warn us this isn't pure science fiction. Vast stores of carbon and methane lie frozen in Arctic permafrost. If unleashed by runaway warming and megafires, they could trigger a cascade, a blaze so self-sustaining, it burns until there's nothing left to consume. At level 10, the concept of fighting fire disappears. Firefighters aren't part of the story anymore. Nations aren't part of the story. Humanity itself becomes just another casualty of the flames. This is the nightmare endgame. Not just a wildfire, but a fire planet, where ecosystems collapse, species vanish, and the earth resets itself in ash. Level 10 isn't inevitable, but every spark, every season, every feedback loop brings us closer. And the question left hanging in the smoke is simple. Do we stop the climb now or wait until fire writes the final chapter for us?